Hello, today we are going to go through our second data analysis or data visualization project, Capstone project. And let's start. So today we have a financial data project. And here, here the professor is saying something like, uh, "This does not, sh this should not be used as financial device, and it is supposed to be challenging. And we are going to focus on financial on the financial crisis. crisis. Yes, which I believe happened in two thousand nine, nine, so." So let's first import our libraries. Here he's saying that we'll learn to use Pandas to directly read from Google Finance using Pandas. It turns out that Google Finance changed and I'll be using Yahoo instead. First we need to OK. OK. This is the banks that we are going to work with. So figure out uh, to figure figure out how to get the stock data from January first, two thousand six, to January first, two thousand sixteen, for each of these banks. Set each bank to a separate data frame with a, the variable name for that bank being its ticker symbol. This will involve a few steps. Use daytime. We are not going to use daytime because Yahoo doesn't need that. Figure out the ticker symbol for each bank. I'm actually going to copy it from my cheat sheet. And figure out how to use data reader to grab info on this stock. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Google may not always work, and that's true for our case. So for the first, I will only do the first one, then I, I'm going to copy the rest. So it's actually simpler than before. We have only to call, this is the ticker for Bank of America, it's BAC. You will just have to search for uh, ticker and the name of the bank, and you'll find it easily. <coughs> so that's going to be equal to What's the name of our library? So da data, data something. Oh, oh, it's here. Oh, it's right here. Okay, so data dot data reader. Then we're going to pass back. We're going to pass Yahoo instead of Google. The start date instead of being a data frame is actually just a number and it's supposed to start from January uh, 2000, 1st January 2016 and the end date is 2016 uh, 1st of January. Okay, so this is going to be the same for all the others, the other banks. So I'll just copy it from my cheat sheet. Let me find it here. There we go. So I'm just going to copy it. There we go. We have this all, all the banks now. I'm going to execute it. So it's loading the data from the website. You can check the head. So we have the head here of BAC, BAC, Bank of America. Is it Bank of America? Yeah, Bank of America. And we have the high. Uh, this is um, economics or what does finance data. So I think these are related to the stocks, right? I think that's how it's it is called stock. Yeah, it is stock, and the low price of the the stock, open, close, volume, and so on. I'll not try to explain everything here because it's quite a long data capstone project. So I will not go deep into the analysis of the data of the, of the visualization as well. Okay. Create a list 
of the ticker symbols as strings in alphabetical order. Okay, so tickers is going to be um, back C GS G PM. Turns out that they are, are already in the correct order, alphabetical order, but we can use dot sorted <coughs> to be sure. And maybe uh, that's not it's not sorted. Is it sort? It is. So it is not. Maybe we have to sort it here because this is, does not return an object apparently. Because this is none as you can see here. So I have to use sorted. I think it's sorted. Then it, that will return uh, the sorted list. Yes. Okay, it's the same order. Anyway. Okay, use pd.pandas.contact pd dot, uh, concat to concatenate the blank uh, the bank data frames together to a single data frame called bank stocks I'll call it data frame instead of bank stocks set the keys argument equal to the tickers list also pay attention to what axis you concatenate on okay how to do that mm. well let's see what the arguments are. It's saying here that we should use keys to be equal to tickers, so maybe there is an... Okay, so we have keys here, so keys equals to tickers. Pay attention to what axis, so we are going to concatenate based on the columns, oh. which is one, I think. What else? It requires objects. Let's see if we can find an example. A data frame, okay. So it's expecting a data frame. I wonder if. Okay, so here's a good example. These are two different data frames. These are two different series. Maybe I can find a data frame here. Okay, so these are two different data frames, so it is expecting two different data frames. And the name we can call either, we can type it objects here, or we can uh, omit it. And the co data the data frames that we're going to use are the bank, the bank data frames. Back CGS, GPM, which are the ones created here, right? MS and WFS, F FC. Good. So now we have multiple indexes. They are harder to do, to deal with. I'm not really used to them, but turns out that they are not that hard once once you know. So it's fine. Not not that I will note how to do everything, but it's not that hard. Set the column name levels. Okay, so you see here that we don't have the names here and now if we, we execute this and we actually ended up calling it df instead of oh we didn't create it so df is equal to that and now okay so now we have this um, column names there df dot head let's show only the th first three elements now we have bank ticker and stock info okay EDA means da data analysis or something. Let me check at Google. EDA. This is meaning. It's called explore dot exploratory data analysis. EDA. I didn't know that before. Let's explore the data a bit. Before continuing, I encourage you to check the documentation. Okay, I already checked that. Reference the solutions if you can figure out how to use dot X S, since that may be a major part of this part. Okay, so I tried to use something else at first, but 
XS is actually quite simple, so I will opt to use XS. I was using, let me check here, I was using... Oh, it's not here. Never mind. Never mind, then I'll just... let's move along. What is the max close price for each bank's stock throughout the time period? Throughout the time period, okay, the, the whole time period, I suppose. What is the max close price? How do I do that? Um, uh, data frame dot. I think you can call arg. No, it's not arg. Argmax is for a numpy array. For pandas, you use idx max, I think. Yes, but it is asking just for the close um, column, so we are going to specify close here. Maybe not. Oh, so we have to use that this here and let me try to rem remember now. You have to pass key, which is close. There is also there is also axis, which is column, which is one, and level, which you can pass either the index this case is 1, as you can see here. So you can either pass the the index of the level, so this is level 0 of uh, axis 1 and this is level 1 of axis 1. So I pass axis 1 and level either I can pass 0, 1 or I can pass stock info. Yeah, but that's not what is being asked, I think. What is the max? Okay, so I need the max value. Okay, there we go. Okay, so these are the max values for each of the banks. For the close column. This is quite, quite high. This one is not so high. But this is quite high. For the C, which is... What is C? Ba -da -da, ba -da -da. City group, okay. Let's move along. So create a new empty data frame called returns, okay. This data frame will contain the returns for each bank's stock. Returns are typically defined by... So this is uh, the formula for returns and I think this is like the time period, current time period and the time period minus one, which is in our case is the previous day and then minus one so that's the difference between the previous day and the next day something like that so let's create an empty data frame and let's call it returns so equal to a pd dot data frame okay we can use pandas dot pcd uh, underscore change method on the close column to create a column representing this return value okay so this method here does this apparently create a for loop that goes in for each bank stock ticker creates this returns column and s sets it as a column in the returns data frame um, okay so for tick in is it tickers or ticks I think it's tickers right Let's print it to check if that's... Yep. So for ticking tickers, we are going to create a new column in our returns, which I typed wrong here, in returns... Returns... Let's execute this again, okay. Returns, then the name of our column is going to be the name of our bank, tick, as we can see here. Oh, and there is also a... return in the name that's going to be equal to what to our data frame on close but first we have to select the, the bank oh so the bank's going to be tick okay 
Let me check that before. So let's say we have BC. Okay, it does work. Okay. So that's going to be equal to this and that method there dot pct change okay let's check what we got okay same thing actually it's not going to be the same thing exactly i think it's because i'm using yahoo not sure because after that we're going to plot this and we're going to get a different result for some reason Maybe there are some missing data, I don't know. Okay, create a pair plot using Seaborn of the returns data frame. Okay. Okay, so that's quite straightforward. You just have to call, first have to import Seaborn because it's not imported. So import, or is it? C oh, it is imported. Okay. Uh, so let's go back. Ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da, here. We don't need to import it, it's already imported. So let's use sns. Dot, what is the plot? Per plot. It should autocomplete. Per plot of our returns. So it says that sns is not defined. Let me search again to check where is this being called. Oops, not season, seaborn. Oh, it's being ex it's being imported in the middle of the project, so I'll just execute this. And let's check if it gets executed. It does? Okay, so let's return there and continue here. It takes a while. Oh, it's saying this because we actually have, as we can see here, returns dot hat three. We have, oh, it's executing. We have a none value here, and that's because we don't have the previous day for this first row here, right? According to the formula. So if we we can skip that first line by using this. So now we skip the first line, or maybe not. Uh, maybe we do have to say, so I, we want this, right? So the, the rows is starting from 1 until the end. Okay. But as you can see here, we don't get something as the professor did. The professor is showing this lines here and ours is not and though we have we supposedly have the same data set so let's use his to show what he's trying to show us which is that the Citibank or it was it Citibank the Citigroup the bank called Citigroup they had a crash uh, in one year we are going to talk more about that afterwards. And that can be visualized here, like their, their return stagnated to zero. You can see it better looking at this one. So we have C return here. You can see that uh, compared to the other banks, it's not moving upwards, right? Okay, let's continue on. See solution for okay using this returns data frame. Figure out on what dates each bank stock had the best and worst single day returns. Okay, you should notice that four of the banks share the same day for the worst worst drop. Did anything significant happen? Okay, so let's do this first. We have to get this, and he's asking for uh, horse single day returns. So it's asking for the returns data frame returns. 
and he wants the uh, smallest value lo or the lowest value so we can use min so if we use min we actually have the lowest and uh, the lower lowest value for each column but he's asking for the for the dates oops so to get the dates you actually have to use as i mentioned before you want the index of the of that row that has the minimum value and you do this to get that there we go so you can see for example that gpm or single day return was on this date okay let's delete this and now we are going to plot the max down here or maybe up here it's better so here it's max going to delete this one you should have noticed that city groups large large largest 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 drop and biggest gain were very close to one another did anything significant happen in that day, time frame so let's check what he's talking about okay so we definitely have a, some discrepancies in our data sets compared to the professor but we can see for example that the worst day on GPM return was on 2009 uh, January 20 <laughs> there's a better way to say that and it's better the its best day or the day with the biggest gain was one day later and that and by the way three or actually four of these banks had the worst day in the same day so that's a sp special day if you want to look that up just go that you will find that that's a special day maybe there was a crisis a global global crisis and every almost every bank uh, bank um, lose some money in this day but you see that uh, economics is crazy or financial things are crazy and you see that the best day was right after the worst day uh, when it comes to GPM bank bank okay take a look at the standard deviation of the returns which stock would you classify as the right the riskiest over the entire time period which would you classify as the riskiest for 2015 okay so we have to to plot twice here so first for the whole time or the entire period of time and to do so I think we just have to call STD I like Python <laughs> I like the simplicity you can also actually the first time that I did this I did like this <laughs> it's more complicated but oops but oops but works or or it doesn't work oh it's apply apply see it also works but this is simpler my typing is not good today okay so you see that uh, we have different data sets like we should be getting this result and ours is way off especially for C so according to his so let's use his the C return is the most ris riskiest because <laughs> the most has the most risk uh, because it has the biggest standard deviation meaning that it flux fluctuates more right and we, can, uh, we are going to actually pl plot it after afterwards okay so standard deviation and what about 2015 then here we have to use that x s command again i think so let's try to use um, returns dot access let me check the data frame again okay so he wants 2015 here um, so actually you are not going to use access we are going to specify and i really like this also 
you can specify what year, year that do you want 15 so 2015 and 0101 to 2016 0101 and that's quite nice right this kind of simplicity and like yeah it's quite straightforward to do those things here in Python so it's impressive and he wants what else? So the standard deviation of this period, like this. So there we go. Interestingly enough, we have the same data <laughs> for the year 2015, because we have the same values. But for the overall data set, we don't. OK. Great, so let's start with plotting, apparently. Create uh, this plot using Seaborn of that. So we are still using the returns data, data frame, and we want it from the same time period as we had above. 0101 to 2016, 0101, and from Morgan Stanley. Oh, which is, what is the tick of Morgan Stanley? Is it MS? I will suppose it is MS, and maybe it's not. Yeah, it's not. I have to check that. Ba -da -ba -da. MS. Oh, but it's using our. Oh, it it was actually MS, but I was forgetting the return. Yep. And we have to plot a this plot. So SNS dot this plot. That. Nice. Here we have a different color, so let's change the color. And what else? Let's change the bin size to be, I don't know, 50. Okay, it's quite similar, maybe it's 100. Yeah, it's less than 100, but anyway. So here we can see that uh, this MS bank has a very small standard deviation. We have here a nice normal curve and maybe, I don't know, maybe this is the first standard negative standard deviation is around here, so it's around minus 0 0.02 and next we are going to check the standard deviation of Citigroup for 2008. Okay, so let's do that. SNS dot, I'll just type it all again. Actually, I'll not do that. Uh, I, I will do that to train. DF, not DF, it's returns uh, from 2008, 0101 to 2009, 0101. And from Citigroup, which is C, return. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And here we have a red plot. Let's check what we have. Okay, here it also has more bins. Bin is equals to 50, let's say. No, more. Okay, so it's quite similar. So here we can see that the standard deviation here looks smaller by this um, sharper um, mountain here, or the sharper curve. And here we have a more smooth curve. And, but if you look at the x axis, you'll see that it's 10 times bigger, right? So the standard deviation here is maybe, I don't know, maybe about around here and maybe I would guess 0 0.1 which is 5 times greater than this one and which actually makes sense with the professor's standard deviation here. It was 17 here and it was, um, it is 3 here so 3 times 5 it's about, it's about 17 in this case because we have some other digits. So yeah, you see that this is the most 
has the most risk because the standard deviation is more is bigger. Yeah. Okay, we can delete delete the professor's plot like this. And yep, I'm just checking everything. Okay, let's keep going. So uh, okay, so more visualization. What a surprise, right? <laughs> a lot of this project will focus on visualizations. Uh, yes, I can tell. Feel free to use any of your preferred visualization libraries to try and recreate the described plot below. Seaborn, Plotly, Plotly, uh, and Cufflinks are just pandas. Sure, we have already imported this. Create a line plot showing close price for each bank of the entire index of time. Okay. Try using a loop or use access to create a cross section. <coughs> Um, so it's asking for the close price and do we have to use okay we have to use our original data frame let's check that again and we should select the close column but we can't do like this I think or if I type it here it will over Right, the professor's plot. Yeah, so we have to use access to grab the close column. And to do so, we have to use like this. The key is going to be close. Call the x is going to be 01 because it's uh, on the columns. And level is, in this case, is, is either stock info or 1, which is the index of this. index, right, <laughs> it's the index of this index, which is 1. So I have I used start info before, so I use 1 now. Let's try. Okay, looks good. Then we have to do what? To create a line plot. What about I type plot here to check if something happens? <laughs> it does. And we get the plot that we wanted, but the size not as big, so maybe we can use <coughs> fig size here to be 12.4. Oh, good. <coughs> so here we can definitely see the, the 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 break. Yeah, the break, right? That the C bank had it went down quite quickly from 2008 and 2009 and by the way 2009 there was a global crisis so we can look that up and this bank actually did a good job this GS bank here it went back on the crisis but it got right up again and continue with a good a good close um, stock which is excellent so that's a way of doing that Another way is using plt.plot, I suppose. I don't know. Let's let's check that. Args. Um, so I don't remember how to use this. We have to specify x and y. What if you just pass the data frame? Let's check. let's see what happens. Oh, this is actually good. It worked. But we got this bunch of things here. Maybe if we create it instead. <laughs> not any better. Um, well. That's not so so bad too. So, and what about increasing the size? So apparently there is no such property, or how we call it, uh, argument. Yeah, and you can see there. That's true. Maybe 
Yeah. Anyway, there is another way to do that by calling plt.figure and specify fig size here to be whatever we want. So it's a tuple. Great. So two different ways ways to plot it. Actually, no, a third way, if I can remember. I will remove a professor's plots and I will plot using iplot. It doesn't have the fixed size parameter, so let's try it again. Nice, so this is quite interesting as well. And you can change here to compare all the data. So you can zoom in in the crisis and check it by uh, hoving, roving, by moving the, mo the mouse. Mouse, yeah, Englishman. So that's that's a good. This is a cufflinks, by the way, and plotly in action, plotly. And they make this interactive graphs here. I don't know how to zoom zoom out without clicking here. There is a way, but I just don't know. But that's quite interesting. You see, we can bend over this. Very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice. Or you could use Tableau as well. Maybe Tableau has something better, right? But this is quite simple. You see you see the power of this? Like you have just one line and you create this? That's impressive. Okay, moving along. Uh, moving average. So this I will not remember how to do. Because to me it was surprised to see this rolling here. I didn't know what that was. And looking by the graph, I suppose that that is the average um, from the past 30 days or from the past 15 and the uh, next 15 days to that day. I'll, I, would, I would suppose something like that. Okay. But let's try. So, what is asking? The rolling 30 day average against close price for Bank of America. So let's first get Bank of America and its uh, close price and to do so we can use that access again and the key is going to be uh, I have to check the data frame So the key could be so we have to select Bank of America, which is this one. Can we call it like this? Okay, yes we can. Apparently we can call the first level like this. And then we are going to get can we use close now? We can is surprising for the that year so <laughs> one more <laughs> 2008 01 until 2009 01 I don't remember doing like this but this is quite quite simple <laughs> I'll look uh, what I did after I finish this and then we want the rolling 30-day average. So there is a method, I think it's called rolling. It's not out of... so I have to look at my my previous answer here. Okay, so this is how I did it previously, if you want to know. I actually had a data frame called back, which is the one that we created at the beginning. And then we have to call yeah this rolling here and window plus 30 and the mean. And I'm going to plot it. And the label is going to be so can remove this. The label is going to be 30 day average. 30 day average. What else? Uh, 
and we want to plot the this line here as well. So maybe it's this whole thing again. And dot plot with a title of as a title back close. Oh, sorry. It's, this is the label. Is it a label? Back close. This is the label as well. Let's change the fi uh, fig size. Plot dot figure. Fig size equals to twelve. I don't know. Just looks bigger, right? Twelve, six, maybe. Yeah. Why is it overlapping? <laughs> oh, we can do this. Okay. There we go. Nice. I can't see the legend. Maybe you have to call it legend. Yep, yep. There we go. So, yes, we can see the downward curve right here. <laughs> Not good. And the average. Yeah, so we had a, oh, a big increase here on the close stock. Yeah. But yeah, this bank, if we, if we zoom in, because this is the back close, which is the same one as we have here. By the way, you can select what whatever you want. Look how nice. And in that graph, we are looking, I suppose, to... Oops. There we go. We are looking to this part over here, right? So this increase here is this one, isn't it? For the close, for the back, yep, I think so. And for 2000 and, oh, so here's 2008. Yep, makes sense. So yeah, same, same graph looking at a different angle. Good, it's the lead professors. Create a heat map of the correlation between the stock's close price. Okay, a heat map of the correlation of close price of all the banks. So here we have to use access and we are going to use the key to be close, access to be one. And we have level to be one as well. Because it is in the second, in the first index of the column index. Okay. Then we get this. And we want a heat map off of this. Is that it? SMS dot heat map. Not so good. Oh, it wants the correlation. Okay, so to get the correlation, we have to call correlation. Yep. And we get the correlation, and here we can see the values. So there is a parameter here that it's called annotation or something. Uh, it's here. A not. <coughs> I think that's the parameter. Yes, cool. So here we can see correlations. So there is a strong correlation. For example, here. And weak correlations, where is black? On the close uh, column. Okay, next one. Cluster map, okay. And from so let's copy copy this because it still wants the correlation. And let's change this to cluster map. And th there we go. No, where is it? Oh it's this one. Yep. We have it. Great. Can I change the is it palette or is it C map? I think it's C map in this case. C map 
Or am I like this one? Where did it go? Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay, so here you can see that it groups to get together the similar banks. So this is the cluster map. Let's move on. Optional. So here we can't see the plots. That's a problem. <laughs> That's because it's using cufflinks. And when you use cufflinks, for some reason, you, when you open the, your notebook again, they are not there. So I'll just delete this and try to solve it by this hints. So use iplot. So df dot iplot. Mm, kind equals candle. To create a plot of Bank of America stock from that period. Okay, so maybe we can select Bank of America like this. And the dates to be 2015, 1 1 2 until 2016. 1 1. Let's try that. Yep, it worked. Great, so this is the candle plot. It's used for finances apparently. You can zoom in and you see a lot of candles. <laughs> I never ever have seen this in my life, <laughs> unless in this, um, except on this lecture, which I'm taking for the I don't know, fourth time, because I've taken this like two years ago, I think. Anyway, these are the candle plots, and if you hover, the mouse over it, you can get the actual statistics, and yeah, that's interesting. And maybe I don't know what is it the variance. I don't know how to interpret this line. You know. Yeah. Did I do something wrong? Okay. Next. I can copy this, and I think it's going to ask the same thing. Use dot ta plot. What is that? Or is I don't know what that stands for, but it's like something like analytical or testing analytical or something. With study as SMA to create a simple moving averages. Don't know what that is. Of Morgan Steel, okay. Oh, simple moving address, it must be SMS, SMA, right? Simple moving average. Thing. Morgan Stanley, which is MS, if I remember correctly. Let's try. Oh, there we go. Nice. This is actually not so nice. We should, um, we should not use the volume here. So, yeah, you see the volume has a different scale, right? Let me check that. You can see that the volume here is a huge, huge number and the others are very small. So that's why if you show volume, you get the, all the other values down here. You can even zoom enough to get the difference between them. But if you exclude volume, then you can see, or you are supposed to see that. Yep. So yeah, let's. Let, should we remove the the? How could we? How could you do this? Here, I wonder. Um. Let's try something. Okay, we have this, so let's use all the columns except the last one. Maybe you can do like that. It's actually, it's not except the last one. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's exactly this. Okay, so all the rows and removing volume, which is the second last column. Didn't work. Oh, everything until that value didn't work. Uh, 
Uh, oh. maybe I have to turn oh. Nope. Let me see again what I have. Oh, I actually have... Okay, so we have to use... <laughs> it's getting bigger. Bigger. So key is equal to... Stock... No, 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 no. Oh, key here is going to be everything. Okay, there's an easier way to do that. We can simply remove it. Or we could use... What if we use the ls data frame? We have it here. So let's use the ms data frame and call. Yep, let's do exactly that. And remove. So can we remove it now? I wonder. No. Let's drop it. <laughs> Let's drop, what is the name? Volume. From x is equals to 1 because it's on the columns. There we go. Now we can call whatever we want here. And was the a plot in study equals study equals to. <coughs> nice. And by the way, professors added a thing called periods. I don't know about this kind of analysis. But you can call periods off of this. Which I really don't know what that stands for. But it changed something. Can we... Oh, it's not loading. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. We can, it's uh, similar to what we had before. But we have more options here. Which I don't know exactly what, what they are for. Next, I will copy this, and what do we have? Oh, this is the last one. So it's a TA plot again, but from oh, it's to use ball, which stands for Bollinger band plot, whatever that is, for Bank of America. So here we are using Bank of America. 2000. Okay, let's try. Maybe this one doesn't have periods. It does. Okay. Cool, it's similar. I actually can't tell the difference. Can you can you tell the difference? Like we can see that Yeah, it, it is different. But I really don't know what yeah, I would like to know. But I don't know what a Bollinger band plot is. <laughs> Not, neither what a simple moving average is. Oh, maybe that I could guess something. But Bollinger I couldn't. Anyway, that's it. Definitely a lot of more specific finance topics here. So, what? Definitely a lot of more specific finance talks here, okay. So don't worry if you didn't understand them all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The only thing you should be concerned with understanding are the basic pandas and visualization operations. With I, which I think we nailed it, right? We didn't know how to do the, what was it, rolling thing. But overall, I think I, I remembered mo many of the things. I think that using this kind of recording to to learn is actually a good idea. It takes more time, but apparently it helps you to memorize things better and to remember it better afterwards. Because you are explaining to yourself what you are doing, right? Good. So that's it for our data 
analysis and visualization capstone project, our second one, we had one before, which was quite easier, much easier. And for that one, we are going to move, we are going to go to machine learning. So we are going to leave data analysis and visualization, and we are going to apply our linear models, our simple linear regression, or multiple linear regression, polynomial linear regression, support to vector machine, k-nearest neighbors, Okay, so bye-bye.